Well, welcome back. Are you ready to try a little bit more social painting? Next, we're going to paint a seascape with a technique that was designed by artist Crystal Frisk, another artist at Art Defined Studios. It's a rugged coastline with rocks and waves. It's bordering on the abstract. And just take a look at that texture. It adds expression that paint alone just really couldn't possibly present. You're probably thinking it must be really difficult and time consuming to create that kind of texture, right? That you need to have some special materials and years of painting experience. Well, just the opposite. This technique is quick and easy. So easy that a person who is painting for the very first time can do this painting. The secret is plain white tissue paper. This is art tissue. Now this is sturdier and thicker than what you might purchase for gifts. You'll need to have about three sheets of this per painting. All right, first thing we need to do is to put on our aprons. When we're using acrylic paint, it's always important to put on your apron because it doesn't come out of your clothes. Now to start our painting, we're first going to determine where our horizon line is going to be. We never want to place it directly in the center of our canvas. So let's kind of figure out where halfway would be and go up just a little bit. Now take a pencil and lightly draw a line across the canvas. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We are going to cover that up too. So if you get any little dips like I just got there, just go ahead and make it straight again and we'll paint over it. Now, get your palette ready with paint. I've already loaded mine up. I've got three pumps of block out white, two pumps of chrome yellow, two pumps of raw umber, and three pumps of cobalt blue. Now over here, I've also put a mixture of polymer gloss medium and water. It's about two parts medium to one part water. We want to have the consistency of heavy cream. Now polymer gloss medium, as I've said, is basically a paint, an acrylic paint that doesn't have any color in it. At Art Defined, we simply refer to this as glue. It's going to provide us with the best bond between the canvas and paint, so we won't have to worry about cracks or about things separating. With a wide brush, and in this case, I'm going to use an inexpensive foam brush just to save the wear and tear on my good brushes. I'm going to go into the polymer gloss medium mixture. Now make sure that you don't have this confused with your white paint. They do look a lot alike. But the polymer gloss medium is, of course, going to be waterier because we've mixed some water in with it. And you should have more of it. So I've just kind of painted an area down here in the lower right-hand part of my canvas. And I'm going to tear a piece of tissue paper and lay it right over the glue. I'm purposefully, purposefully putting wrinkles into it. And we'll just brush a little bit more polymer gloss medium right over the top of that. Now when I reach the side, I will just paint around the edges and attach it to the edges like this. It's a good idea to have your table covered because you might drip a little bit with this watery mixture. But we need to have it watery so it soaks through the tissue paper. And as you can see, I can push it down with my foam brush just to get it to adhere a little better. We don't need to have it flat. We don't want it flat if it's supposed to be rocks. But we do need to have it well attached. OK, let's do another rock over on this side of the canvas. And we're going to use the other half of this tissue sheet. Just work it in. Allow it to wrinkle. <laughs> this is one case where wrinkles are a beautiful thing. And 
just press it down into the canvas like this. We will be putting paint over the top of it. That's going to help press down other things. And I'm just going to wrap this around the edge and paint it down. And don't be afraid to get it on your fingers either. Polymer gloss medium is completely safe. Okay, now those are kind of balanced with each other. I think I'll just add a little smaller rock right up here. So I'll use a little less tissue paper. So these are rather big, the ones we put in, because they're right up here close to us. But let's do another bit of rock jutting out here. And let's make this one maybe just not quite as tall. And lastly, I think I'll put one up here near the horizon. It's never good to have them all exactly the same distance out into the water. Rocks don't line themselves up quite that orderly, do they? Just take that back to the shoreline with another piece. Your rocks are not going to look anything like this, and you've probably discovered that if you're following right along with me. Your rocks are going to be different. There is no way that you can copy exactly what I've done using tissue paper. Tissue paper is going to do what it wants to do. Now, I'm going to cover these rocks with a little bit of brown paint to get them to uh, stick a little bit better to the canvas and to also give us a little bit of time for some color to dry. Now look what happens when I start putting this brown tape paint, put this brown paint right on top of the gloss medium. See how you can see all of those beautiful cracks and wrinkles? Just like you'd see on a rugged rock that's next to the sea. I'm not concerning myself with getting a real even coat of paint. I just want to make sure that all the tissue paper is covered. So in order to do that, in some cases, I'm actually having to brush the paint outside of the tissue paper a little bit. Better than that than to have white tissue paper. Okay, well before we take a break here, let's do the sky, shall we? All right, I'm gonna clean that brush off really well. And when you're cleaning a brush, don't be afraid to push it down against the bottom of the jar of water. That will help get all of the paint out of there. And you know it's clean when you touch it to your paper towel and you don't see any more paint. Okay, go to your white paint, still using a big thick white brush, and just start painting the sky. You notice I'm just going above my rocks. I'm trying to stay away from that brown. And if you grab a little bit like I just did, go ahead and go back and forth with the paint until it disappears. A Little bit of brown up there won't matter. Now do you notice how with my paint, I am going side to side from one end of the canvas to the next. Okay, 
just filling up that area. Now without cleaning my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my yellow paint and just start it now at the very top part of the canvas. Going back and forth like so. I think I'll add just a little bit of water. If you see it start to drag and you have some spots like that, that means your brush is getting a little bit dry. So just dip it in the water and then come back to your canvas with it. Doesn't necessarily mean you need to go get more paint, just more water. I'm painting the top of my canvas and the sides. Now from that top stripe I just painted, I'm just going to come slowly down. And you notice I'm still going with that back and forth stroke and that lets me have a beautiful blend. Beginner painters, one of the things we uh, often do is we do little short strokes like that. And you know, that's fine if you want to have some clouds that look like that. But really, if you just go back and forth without stopping from one side to the other, you'll end up with a beautiful gradient up there at the top of the sky. Okay, well now this is a great time to take a break. We need to let this paint dry, so go get a drink refill. Look around the room at everybody else's canvas because everybody's is going to be looking different at this time. But don't continue to fuss over your tissue paper texture. We need to give it a few minutes to dry, so let it, let it rest. Make sure you put your brush in the water and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Well, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed the painting so far. Now it's time to get some of the water and the waves in there. Hopefully you still have some tissue paper left. And I'm just going to go right ahead and tear this big piece into some smaller pieces. And let's go back to our polymer gloss medium. Now we're going to put some waves in around the rocks. So I'm just going to paint that area. These don't need to have as much wrinkling as the rocks. In fact, they could just be more of a oh, more of a stretched out wrinkle. And we don't need to fill every little space around the rocks. So I can see I can kind of stretch my torn area of the tissue paper in. And I'm just going to bunch it up around so it goes under this rock over here. It's okay if you end up sticking one on top of your rock too. These can be a little bit flatter. I'm not using as much tissue paper. I'm not bunching it up as much. I do want to get some in under this rock too. It's a little bit bigger piece for that. Just kind of squeezing it a little bit to get it in there. And if you go around the side again, just tuck it around with a little bit of the polymer gloss. Now we're going to paint the water. And the blue by itself would be okay. But it's going to be a lot prettier if I mix just a little bit of yellow paint in with this blue in order to get more of a teal color. And then let's take a little bit of the light, the white paint, and lighten that up. You should have something similar to this color. If, it's yours, if yours is a little bit more blue or if it's a little bit more green, that's okay. I'm going to make a little bit more here, so I scoop a little bit more yellow in. I've still got some of my blue paint sitting there. And I'll scoop a little bit more white. See, now at this point, you guys might want to put, hit pause on the video until you can get your paint mixture ready. But I'm going to go ahead and start painting. I'm going to start up here at the horizon. And I'm going to use my large brush and I'm just going to go cover that line that I had painted at the, or that I'd drawn with a pencil at the beginning. And I'm going to bring this color in around the rocks. Now I'm pretty handy with this big brush, but some of you at this point 
might prefer to move to a smaller brush. If you go over the tops of some of the rocks, over your tissue, it's painted, that's absolutely fine. And when we get over the tissue paper that's still wet with the polymer gloss medium, you'll notice it kind of thins out just a little bit and you start to see those wrinkles appear. That's great, those are the waves. You can always add a little bit of water to your paint if it's starting to drag. And notice I'm not leaving white space between the rocks and the water. I'm getting right up against those rocks with this color. Now we just need a few little details there. One of the details I like to do is to get a little bit of a shadow underneath the rocks. So keeping my, my big brush, I'm just kind of doing a stroke or two of straight blue underneath each rock pile, like so. If you want to, you can break it up into some smaller strokes. And even the, even the smaller one up here at the top. Okay, now I'm going to put my brush into the water. I still have my foam brush, and my foam brush still has some polymer gloss medium. I'm just going to dip the little corner of my foam brush in and get it back over here to the polymer gloss area, kind of gather up a little polymer gloss in it. And let's just brush that. I need a little bit more yellow paint than that on the top part of these rocks. Okay, that makes them a little sunny. A little highlight on the top. Okay, now I'm gonna keep that, that foam brush. Let's clean some of that yellow paint out. And what I just did with that yellow I'm going to do with white now. This time I'm not adding polymer gloss medium. On the wrinkly parts where we just put the tissue, let's create some waves, some white caps. So with your foam brush, and you want to kind of hold it so that it's not perpendicular to the canvas, but more towards a side angle. You want to get use more of the flat side of the foam brush than the pointed side. And just draw it gently over the top of the waves, like so. And you'll see that it picks up uh, the wrinkles, but I'm not pressing hard enough for it to gather down into the wrinkles. And that's how we're gonna get those waves. A Little bit of wave texture there. If you drag through the blue, it might pick up a little bit of blue. Okay, well basically this painting is done. You can add a few more little waves out here in the blue ocean if you'd like. Uh, you can add a little bit of uh, blue into the rocks or some green as if you've got some algae. Heck, you could even paint a, a lighthouse or, or some birds or something like that on the sky. Make it your own, personalize it. So, now that you've seen a couple of paintings, I really encourage you to throw a painting party or visit a painting party studio. Anyone can paint. You guys will have fun with it. Thank you.